Last class we were discussing about filtration. We have seen what is the requirement of filtration after the other treatment operations like coagulation, flocculation, softening, etc. Because during this processes what happens? The flocks are formed and we are going for settling. But the settling will not be 100% efficient. So whatever the water coming out of this treatment units will be having minute flocks and that will be deteriorate the appearance of the water or aesthetic quali quality of the water as well as it will deteriorate the quality. So if you want to get aesthetically pleasing water then we have to go for this filtration. So we have discussed what are the different types of filter filters commonly used in water treatment plants and we have seen that rapid sand filter and slow sand filter are being used maximum in community water treatment plants and pressure filters are used in swimming pools and other industrial complexes where space is a limitation. And we have also discussed what are the different mechanisms involved in the filtration. And we, t we also seen that as the filtration process uh, progresses, there will be head loss in the filter. So we will discuss about the head loss in detail today. So this picture shows how the head loss varies as the filtration progresses. So this line, this straight line shows the static pressure. That means the water column is just standing above the filter media. At that time, the pressure distribution will be like this. But once it is the clean filter media is there and water starts flowing through that one, the filtration, the head loss in the filter will be something like this. And with, with respect to time or during the filter run, on halfway through the head loss will be something like that. The head loss decrease will be higher in the top portion then it is going almost like this. And afterwards what will happen? The pressure drop will be so high that there is a negative pressure zone developing here. Okay? So if negative pressure zone develops in the filter, what will happen? The efficiency of the filter will be coming down drastically. The reasons are Reasons for this negative head development are head loss, when the head loss exceeds the total depth of water, water is standing over the filter, filter and if the negative pressure develops then it causes air pockets inside the filter. So if air pockets are there naturally there will be short circuits or the end day filter media will not be used completely so naturally the efficiency of the filter will be decreasing and moreover there will be filter cracks because of the head loss. So when filter cracks are there, the filtration will not be proper, just the water will be passing through the cracks just like short circuiting. So what will happen? There will not be any removal of particulate particles from the water. So whatever the effluent we are giving, influent we are giving, the same quality of effluent will be coming out. So we have to clean the filter once the negative pressure is developed or it is always advisable to clean the filter before the head loss exceeds the permissible limit. Now we will talk about the hydraulics of flow through porous media because the filter can be considered as a porous media like our groundwater flow. So there what is happening? The water is flowing through the pores of sand, soil, silt, etc. So the filter can also be considered as a porous media. So the flow through porous media is being studied in detail. So this is, can be applied in groundwater flow and groundwater flow most of the time we use 
Darcy's equation for finding out the head loss. And ground water always we assume that the flow is laminar. And when we co come to the filter, for clean but filter also the flow through the filter media is in the laminar range. So we can use this Darcy's equation or modified Darcy's equation for finding out the head loss. So to maintain, so what is happening when the filtration is progressing? We have seen that filter grains are there and the solids from the water or the particles or the colloidal matter or the flux, whatever is coming through the water, when it passes through the filter, what will happen? It is getting deposited on the filter media. So as the particle get deposited on the filter media, the pore size between the filter media decreases. So as the pore size decreases, what will happen? The velocity, the pore velocity will be drastically increasing. So when the velocity increases, it will be shearing off the particles, whatever is already being attached to the filter media. So once the particles are sheared off, what will happen? It will come along with the effluent of the filter. So naturally the filter quality or filter effluent quality will be very, very bad. And moreover, the filtration rate will be decreasing. So if you want to maintain a constant rate, we have to apply more and more head. So when the energy decreases, head loss goes on increasing and after a certain time what will happen? The head loss will be so uneconomical if you want to overcome the head loss. So it is always advisable to go for by quashing. What is the, that is the treatment option, treatment method, that is the cleaning method we use in depth filters because entire depth of the filter is being used for the cleaning purpose. So we can clean the filter bed by by quashing so that all the particles, whatever is already attached to the filter, filter media can be detached and the media will be getting cleaned again. So if you want to find out the head loss, we can use this equation. This is the modified form of darcy Wisbach equation and this equation is known as karman kosny equation. Here head loss H of through the filter is equal to F dash into L into 1 minus E into V squared divided by E cube G into DP. So we can see that the head loss is directly proportional to the filtration velocity. Vs is nothing but the filtering velocity, the velocity of the water just above the bed, which we can find out using this one total flow Q to the filter divided by the area of the filter. So we will be getting the filtration velocity and it is inversely pr proportional to the diameter of the diameter of the filter media grains and and the factors influencing is the length of the filter because if the length is high definitely the head loss will be high and here this f, f bar is the friction factor these are the terms hf is the friction loss through bed of particles of uniform size dp so we are assuming the particle size along the filter depth is uniform so this equation can be used only for uniform size filter media and E is the porosity of the bed and small g is the gravitational acceleration and I have already mentioned that F dash is a friction factor that we can find out using this formula 150 into 1 minus E divided by Re plus 1.75. This is applicable if the flow is in laminar range but we have seen that most of the time the filtration, the velocity water we are employing in filtration, the flow will be coming under laminar condition and we, how can we find out whether the flow is under laminar condition or turbulent condition or transitional condition? It is depending upon the Reynolds number. Reynolds number we can find out using the formula phi rho Vs d by mu where phi is the shape factor, rho w is the density of water, Vs is the filtration velocity. D is the diameter of the part particle and mu is the dynamic viscosity. And the shape factor for the filter grains, whatever we usually employ, varies from 0.75 to 0.85. So if you put the velocity here, we can calculate the Reynolds number. If the Reynolds number is less than 1, we can assume that the, no, 
we know that the flow is laminar. If the Reynolds number is in between 1 to 2000, then it is transitional. Then the naturally we have to change this formula to find out the friction factor. So before going to use this formula, first what we have to do is based upon the velocity, we have to find out the Reynolds number and find out what regime the flow is, whether it is laminar regime, transitional regime or turbulent regime. So according to that, we have to find out the friction factor and use the correct equation. But you know, know that the filter media in a filter, especially in a gravity sand filter, it varies because we use different grades of sand. The finer sand at the top because by quashing that will be happening because the density of the sand will be always the same. So finer sand will come in the top, then coarser and the biggest one will be coming under the bottom of the filter. So the sand size will be varying. In such cases, how can we find out the head loss? What we have to do is we have to find out the head loss of each segment with uniform size particle and sum it up. Then we will be getting the and the head loss. So this formula can be used for non-uniform medium. HF is equal to L into 1 minus E into Vs squared by E cube into G and sigma Fij, Xij by Dij. Xij is the weight fraction between adjacent sieve sizes. That means from the top portion to the middle to the bottom, what is the weight fraction of the or the length fraction of that particular material. For example, you have a rapid sand filter, 75 centimeter depth. So we are using the fine sand for 20 centimeter, then the coarser one, another 20 centimeter, and the biggest one, next 10, uh, 30 centimeter or so. So how can we find out? This Xij is nothing but 20 divided by 60. That is the fractional length of that particular layer. So we can find out the head loss using this formula if it is a non-uniform non medium and most of the case the sand media is non-uniform. Now we will see how the filter operates because there are different operations involved in the filter run because most of the time the filtration will be taking place but we have seen that after filtration progresses the head loss will be increasing so the uh, flow rate or the filtration rate will be declining and the quality of the effluent will be deteriorating. So at this stage we have to go for by quashing. So we have to make the arrangement for all these things in the same unit. So how, how the filter will be operating we will see in detail. So this picture shows a typical rapid sand filter. So we can see that this is the wash water tank where the clean water will be stored for the by quashing of the filter and this is the water level during filtration. So the water level will be up to here and here you will be having a free board of around 0.5 meter and this is the wash water trough, the detail is this one. So this is the one which is collecting all the wash water and taking it to the drain and here and during filtration this much water head will be available up to here. So that is the force available for the filtration. And we can see here this is the sand around 60 to 76 mm and this is the gravel 40 to 60 mm and this is the under drainage, drainage system so which collect the filtered water and at the same time this under drainage system can allow this water whatever is required for the cleaning of the filter to pass through this pores in the upward direction and here this is the influent pipe and this is the train, train pipe and here we can see and the train pipe and this is the effluent thing. So first during the operation what we do, okay, how the filter operates that means during the filtration how the filter is operating, okay, open the wall A and open the wall B, okay, which is the wall way. So this is the wall way that means influent water is coming to the filter and it goes up like this and it will be staying here. So the water will be passing through the filter and the clean water will be collected here and it will be coming like this and we can collect the clean water through the through this pipe. C 
see this this is the b so during regular run of the filter only the valves a and b will be open all other valves that means c d e everything will be closed that is the normal filter run so when when we want to do the back washing what we have to do close valve a and close valve b so these are the two valves used for the regular filter run so we have to close them then open valve c and d water flows from the wash water tank to flow through filtering medium loosening up the sand and washing the accumulated solids from the surface of the sand out of the filter filter backwash water is returned to head end of the treatment plant so i'll explain again so first what we have to do is we have to close this valve a and valve b and open the valve d and valve c so what will happen the water comes from here it it goes up to up to the under drainage so from here the water will be moving in the upward direction so here you can see the head available is 7 to 10 meter at high head what will happen the water will be flowing at a high velocity so because of the high velocity all these sand particles will be getting lifted up so enough velocity will be there all the particles will be getting lifted up so in that process what will happen high velocity is there all the sand particles are fluidized so whatever is the debris or the dust particles collected to the filter media will be getting detached so whatever the detached particles it will be rising up and the water level will be up to here here we can see the wash water trough so the water will be collected here and it will be coming here and going to the drain so this is what we usually do for back washing and for back washing the filtration rate will be in the rate of 40 to 60 meters per hour we know what is the regular filtration rate it is 4.5 to 6 meter per hour but filtration back washing rate is around 10 times more than the regular filtration rate and usually the back washing is done for 10 minutes so by the time all the particulate matter whatever is got attached to the filter media will be getting removed then after that one what we do the how to waste the filter water so what we have to do open valve a and e all other valves closed effluent is sometimes filtered to waste for a few minutes after filter has been washed so here what we have to do is during the back washing all the filter media is getting disturbed or everything was fluidized and everything will be set, settled down when the filter or backwash is stopped but what happened some particulate matter or some dust particle or colloidal particle will be still there which is already loosened and it is not completely removed so if we start the filter run again what will happen the initial stage the effluent quality or the filtrate quality will be will not be so good so what we have to do we have to go for the regular filtration but waste the water for few minutes so for that one what we have to do open the valve a and the regular filtration will be starting so instead of collecting the effluent through this b what we have to do we have to train the effluent through e so what will happen it will not be going to the disinfection unit or the distribution system something will be wasted here till the effluent quality reaches the required limit so this is how the filter is being operated so we have seen that a very high rate of water flow is used for by washing that means around 40 to 60 meter per hour and that flow rate will be continued for 10 to 15 minutes so so much of water will be used for this by washing so if we waste and have water it is not advisable so what we usually do is the by water by wash water water is coming out from the filter will be sent to the head end of the water treatment plant that means this water will be collected and send it to the primary sedimentation tank so there the debris will be getting removed then again it will be going coming to the coagulation flocculation system and again it will be coming that means we are not wasting that water though it is dirty we can clean it up because already destabilized particles are present there so the removal will be much easier so now we will see how the 
filter operates. We have seen that during the filter operation, the flow will be getting reduced if you are applying the same pressure. So, the filter can be operated under different conditions. If you want to have a particular flow rate, a constant flow rate, what we have to do? We have to keep on increase the energy applied because as the head loss increase, we have to supply more energy to overcome the head loss. So, that is known as constant rate filtration. That means, irrespective of the head loss, we want to get the same rate of filtration or same quantity of filtrate from the filter. So, that is known as constant rate filtration and another one is constant pressure filtration. That means, always we will be giving the same pressure. That means, the water level above the filter will be always same. So, at that particular head, the filter will be running. So, what will happen? Initially, the rate of filtration will be high. As the filter pores get clogged or the head loss increases, the filtration will be, filtration rate will be decreasing. And another one is variable or declining rate filtration. Here, the rate will be declining as the head loss increases. I will show you a picture explaining all those things. Okay. This is the rate of filtration and this is the time of filtration. So, if you plot the rate of filtration versus time of filtration, if you get a straight line like this, like B, it is constant rate filtration. Irrespective of the time, okay, we are getting a constant rate. And second one is constant pressure filtration. We are allowing the same head above the filter. So, what will hap happen? As the head loss increases, initially you will be having a very high head, then as the head loss increases, the filtration rate will be decreasing, de decreasing and afterwards it will become asymptotic. And the third one is declining rate filtration. Here initially for some time it will be remaining almost a constant and afterwards it will be decreasing. So, depending upon our requirement, we can select any one of this one. But if you go for constant rate filtration, in the energy requirement will be very, very high because initially you will be getting a very high flow rate and afterwards if you want to carry out or continue with that same flow rate, the energy up to be applied is very, very high. Now, we will talk about mixed media filters. Till now, we were talking about sand filters. Okay. Sand filter means we are using different grades of sand. But the disadvantage of this system is that in sand filter, whatever be the particle distribution, whatever way we want to put it, after backwashing, what will happen? Everything will be settling with the settling velocity. Definitely, the coarser sand particle will be having a higher settling velocity compared to the finer particles. So, what will happen? The coarser particle will be coming in the bottom of the filter, then the finer will be at the top. So, if you see the pore size between these particles, what will happen? The top layer will be having small pores compared to the bottom layer. But as we know, the water coming to the filter, it is already, it is having already, already destabilized particles or the flux, whichever is formed during coagulation, flocculation or fil softening process. So, those flux will be relatively larger in size. So, what will happen? This fine pores, whatever is present in the top of the filter, when this flux comes, it will be just strained through that layer and the pores will be getting choked or the clogging. So, what will happen? The finer ones will not be able to pass through that one. So, maximum head loss will be felt in the top layer of the filter and the bottom layer of the filter may not be used completely. So, if you want to use the filter effectively, the best pore distribution is like this. The bigger pores, biggest pores should come in the top, then the pore size should decrease gradually. So, how can we achieve that one? Okay. It, this can be achieved only by using different media. This different media selection depend, is depending upon the specific gravity of that particular material. Because if you select a lighter particle in the top layer, what will happen? We can use coarser particle size and denser media in the bottom. So, that is the principle of this mixed media filters. We have seen dual media filter. So, the mixed media filter is also working in the same principle. So, ideal filter is medium graded evenly, large at top to 
small at bottom can be accomplished by using three or more types of media. So, in mixed media filters what we use is three types of material, one is anthracite, another one is silica and another one is garnet sand. Okay. This anthracite, the specific gravity varies from 1 point, specific gravity is around 1.6 and sand, silica or sand, the specific gravity is around 2.6 and garnet, the specific gravity is around 4.2 to 4.6. So, since the specific gravity is different, so we can have different grain sizes. So, when we use different grain sizes, naturally the pore distribution will be different. So, if you want to find out, if you know the specific gravity of the particle, okay, if you want to have a pore size distribution or grain size, okay. For example, here we can see that if the specific gravity is 1.6 and we are using anthracite, we can go up to 1 mm particle size as the effective size and silica, the particle size will be around 0.4 to 0.5 mm and for garnet sand, it will be 0.15 mm. So, we will be getting a gradual distribution of pores like this. See, this, this is the dual sand filter, Sa coal is in the top and sand is in the bottom. So, we can see that in the coal itself, there is a distribution of size distribution. The finer coal particles will be in the top as we comes towards the bottom, the particle size is increasing and then comes the sand bed because sand is having a specific gravity of around 2.6. So, here also finer particles are in the top, then gradually the size is increasing and bottom is having the largest particles. So, if you see the pore size distribution, it is something like that. Initially, we have smaller pores and it will be increasing as the, as we go around this line, okay. So, and afterwards there will be a sudden change in the pore size and the pore distribution will be something like this, see. So, Definitely, this filter will be much better than the sand filter. Sand filter, the pore size distribution will be in this direction. It is in the opposite direction. Pore size distribution will be something like this. Okay, that means the pore size at the top will be extremely small and it will be increasing like this. And this is after backwash, what happens? Because some mixing of the medium will be taking place. See, some sand particle is getting into the coal particle. So, the after backwash, the pore size distribution is something like this. This steep variation is getting reduced to the variation like this, okay. So, the pore size distribution is like this. But ideal case is something like this. We have to have a pore size maximum at the top and minimum at the bottom. So, how can we achieve that one? Okay, if you have three materials and if you want to find out what is the grain size, we can use the fo this formula to find out what is the different grain sizes we can use. If you know the three materials, whatever we are going to use, their specific gravities. The formula is like this, D1 by D2 equal to rho 2 minus rho L by rho 1 minus royal raised to 3 by 2. So, we will solve a small, small example. Say we have sand with 0.5 mm as effective size and we know that the sand specific gravity is 2.65 and we are going to use anthracite as well as garnet. Anthracite is having a specific gravity of Anthracite, specific gravity we will take it as 1.5 and garnet, specific gravity we will take it as 4.2. So, if sand is having a size of 0.5 mm, so what is the size of anthracite we have to use and what is the size of garnet we have to use? We can use this formula. So, it is something like this, okay, D1 for anthracite it is coming point. 5 into 2.6 minus specific gravity or density of water, specific gravity of water we take it as 1 divided by 1.5 minus 1 raised to 3 by 2. So, we will be getting the diameter as 
1.5 mm. That means if you use anthracite with a specific gravity of 1.5 and a sand with specific gravity of 2.6 and a diameter of 1.5, the anthracite diameter requirement or the size of the particle requirement is 1.1 mm. So, similarly we can find out what is the garnet diameter requirement. So, here everything else will be remaining the same. We have to change the specific gravity as 4.2 mm. So, the result will be 0.3 mm. So, we can see that the size distribution of anthracite, anthracite as 1.1 mm. sand equal to 0.5 mm and garnet as 0.3 mm. So, this will be the size distribution. So, if you want to plot the pore size versus depth. So, remember the other side will be at the top because it is having the least specific gravity then comes the sand, then comes the garnet. So, the size distribution will be something like this. That means, the largest pore or the biggest pores will be in the top, then it will be decreasing like this. So, if the filter is something like this, it will be having the maximum efficiency. What will happen? The bigger particles will be getting attached in the top and finer and finer particles will be coming to the bottom and here everything will be getting collected. That means, entire depth of the filter media will be used. Now, we will talk about the dimensions of the filter. This is the dimension of a standard rapid sand filter. L is to B ratio varies from or L, L, L by B ratio varies from 1.11 to 1.66 and depth of the filter is around 2.6 meter and we usually provide a free board of 0.5 meter and how to select the filter sand, whether we can dump the builder sand just like that in a gravity sand filter. No, we have to have proper sand and properly graded sand. In slow sand filters, we can use the sand as such. And what are the property requirement of the filter sand? It should be hard and resistant. If the sand is corrosive and if it breaks fast, it is not advisable to go for such type of sand. And effective size of the sand should be in the range of 0.45 to 0 0.770 mm. You know what is this effective size? Effective size is the size of particle means only 10 percentage of the particle is less than that one. That means it is the p ton value of the size distribution curve and uniformity coefficient should be in the range of 1.3 to 1.7. Okay, Uniformity coefficient is nothing but this is P60 by P10 value should be in the range of 1.3 to 1.7 and there should not be much ignition loss. Ignition loss should be less than 0.7 percentage. The ignition loss means whatever is the organic material present in the sand. Okay, it should be very, very less. It should be less than 0.7 percentage. That means when we ignite it, all the organic matter or all the volatile compounds will be going out as carbon dioxide and moisture. So, that should be very, very minimal and soluble fraction of the sand in HCl should be less than 5 percentage and silica content should be more than 90 percentage. If the sand is having more silica content, it will be very, very hard. So, sand should be having a silica content above 90 percentage and specific gravity should be in the range of 2.5 to 2.65 and wearing loss should be very, very less. That means, it should be less than 3 percentage because in by washing, what will happen? All the grains will be fluidizing and so much of wear will be taking place. Okay? If the sand is not very hard, what will happen? The sand will be getting lost in this process. So, that type of a sand is not recommended for uh, rapid sand filters. And depth of sand varies from 0.6 to 0.75 centimeter and standing water depth varies from 1, 1 to 2 meter and freeboard we have already seen it is 0.5 meter. Now, we will see if you have a heap of sand, how can we prepare the filter sand? Okay? It can be done by sieve analysis and calculating the 
percentage of different size of sand, percentage of different size of sand present in that heap. So, we assume that P1 is the percentage of stock sand that is smaller than the effective size D1. That means D1 we, we will be knowing, D1 is specified, it should not be less than 0 0.45 to 0 0.75 that P1 is nothing but 10 percent P10 that should not be less than 0.45 to 0.7. So, we know this D1 value and P1 if the sand is 10 percentage of the sand is less than the effective size. So, from that one 10 percentage can be used. So, P1 is 10 percentage of unusable sand that means you have the distribution and from that one we find out what is the P10 value which is available from the effective size. So, we can find out what is the P1 percentage. From that P1 percentage, 10 percentage of the sun can be used for the filter because 10 percentage of the sun is less than the effective size. That is why we are using 10 percentage of that sun. And P2 is the percentage of stock sun that is smaller than the desired 60 percentile size D2. So, what is happening is this 60 percentile we can find out from the size distribution curve. So, P2 is the percentage of stock sand, stock sand that is smaller than the desired 60 percentile size D2 and D2 value is also known because we know the uniformity coefficient it should be in the range of 1.3 to 1.5 and uniformity coefficient is nothing but P60 by P10. So, from that one we can find out what is D2 and P3 P3 is the percentage of suitable stock sign. So, that is nothing but 2 into P2 minus P1. That means P2 is the 60 percentile and P1 is the 10 percentile. So, P2 minus P1 is 50 percentile. So, 2 into P2 minus P1 gives you 100 percent. So, this is 2 into P2 minus P1 is therefore, the percentage lying in between D1 and D2. That means, it gives 50 percentage. And P4 is the percentage of sun with a diameter below which it is too fine. That means, P1 we, we know that 10 percentile sun and from that one 10 percentage of the sun which is smaller than P1 that D1 diameter can be used, but remaining 90 percentage we have to waste. So, we can find out that P4 the percentage of sun with a diameter below which it is too fine. So, P4 is nothing but P1, P1 is the 10 percentile diameter P1 minus 0.1 P3 that is equal to and P3 is the total sun. So, we can use that out of the total sun 10 percentage of the sun can be used with a size lower than D1 that corresponding to the P1 ok. So, P4 which is not being used is equal to P1 minus 0.2 into P2 minus P1 because P3 is nothing but 2 into P2 minus P1. So, we will be getting 1.2 P1 minus 0.2 P2. Similarly, P5 is the percentage of sand with a part particular diameter above which it is too coarse. That means, we cannot use too fine sand as well as too coarse sand. So, P5 is the sand particles size which is too coarse which cannot be used in the filter. So, that can be find out this P2, P2 is the 60 percentile plus 0.4 into 2 into P2 minus P5, P1 because P2 minus P1 you know it is 50 percentage. So, 0.4 of this one will give you the 100 percent that means P2 plus 0.8 into P2 minus P1. So, from the size cumulative frequency curve we can find out the diameter correspo corresponding to this P4, P5 that means D4 and D5 and the percentile. So, we will be getting the size distribution along with the percentage of sand. So, from that one we can make up the sand required for the filter. So, now we will see the under drainage system, how the under drainage system of the filter is because that is also very very important because whatever water is filtered through the filter it has to be collected in the under drainage system. At the same time ok whatever the water required for backwashing the filter that also should pass through this under drainage drainage system. So, under drainage system consists of many laterals. So, we can see how the laterals are placed. So, see these are the laterals and 
we can see the holes here. So, here the gravel bed will be there and these laterals are supported on concrete block and whatever is the water collected from the laterals are coming to the manifold which is a big pipe and through the manifold it is coming out of the filter. So, we can see how the holes are put it in the lateral it is in a staggered fa fashion the holes will be put it in a staggered fa fashion. So, holes one will be here and the one will be here like that. So, now we will see how to find out what is the velocity required for the bike washing and how to do the bike washing because bike washing and the bed has to get expanded or fluidized. So, for that one back what velocity we have to provide or what is the head loss taking place in back washing. So, that we can find out. So, how can we find out? So, here what we assume that the head loss taking place during back wash is equal to the buoyant weight of the sand particles. So, we have to make the bed fluidized. So, how can we find out the head loss in a fluidized bed? So, head loss in a fluidized bed head into density into acceleration due to gravity which is equal to L e. This is nothing but the fluidized bed depth L e into rho s minus rho l. Rho s is the density of the sand particle minus this is the density of the liquid into g into 1 minus epsilon e. This is the porosity of the expanded bed. So, this gives you what is the buoyant weight of the expanded bed. So, head loss will be equal to the buoyant, buoyant weight of the expanded bed. So, we can find here what we are doing is drag and gravity forces are in equilibrium. So, we can find out what is the epsilon e of the sand bed or if you know what is the L e, we can find out what is the porosity of the sand or if you know how much expansion is required, we can find out even the head loss or we can assume like the buoyant force of the unexpanded bed and the expanded bed are the same because the mass conservation principle we can derive that one. So, how the head loss will be coming? I will just derive that formula. Because head loss in the fluidized bed and head loss in the regular bed will be equal. That means, L into 1 minus epsilon that means, the porosity of the regular bed into rho m minus rho l divided by this one we can put it as rho w because water is the fluid into rho w into g that will be equal to L into F B. This is the length of the fluidized bed into 1 minus epsilon F B. This is the porosity of the fluidized bed into rho m minus rho w by rho w into g. So, what will happen? These two terms are the same for both the filters. That means, L into 1 minus epsilon will be equal to L F B into 1 minus epsilon B. So, we can write like this L into that means, the matter the solid particles whatever is present in the filter before expansion and after expansion will be the same that is what this shows L F B into 1 minus mass conservation. So, L into 1 minus epsilon is equal to L F B into 1 minus epsilon B or if you want to find out what is the length of the fluidized bed, it is equal to L into 1 minus epsilon by 1 minus epsilon F B. So, we can find out and from the practice it has seen that to get a proper backwashing, this epsilon F B should be in the range of 0 0.6 to 0 0.773. So, this is the range. Amrita Rajan has found out that the expanded bed porosity should be in the range of 0 0.6 to 0 0.73 to get a proper backwash. Now, we will see how to find out the backwash velocity.
this epsilon f b that means the fluidized bed porosity is a function of the backwash velocity and the settling velocity because if the you have a particle like this and one velocity of water is like this backwash velocity or we can call it as v b and another velocity acting on the particle is the one settling velocity v t v t we have discussed earlier so the resultant velocity is the one with which the particle will be moving so this epsilon b epsilon fb is a function of the backwash velocity as well as the settling velocity so we can write like this vb by vt raised to 0.22 here vb is the backwash velocity vt is the settling velocity so lfb is nothing but l into 1 minus epsilon divided by 1 minus epsilon b epsilon fb we can replace by this value v b divided by vt raised to 0 0.22 and for non non uniform size particle bed we can find out lfb equal to l into 1 minus epsilon into sigma xij divided by 1 minus vb by vt ij because with respect to the particle size this settling velocity will be varying it raised to 0 0.22 so from this one we can find out either the backwash velocity if you fix up the fluidized bed lump fluidized bed length so usually an expansion of expansion of 150 to 170 percentage is recommended for proper backwashing 150 to 170 percentage that means it is getting expanded by 1.5 to 1.7 times so this is the principle of backwashing we will see the problem determining the head loss across a bed of uniform size particles the problem is like this clean water at 20 degree centigrade is passed through a bed of uniform sand at a filtering velocity of 4 meter per hour which is equivalent to 1.11 into 10 raise to minus 3 meter per second in the sand grains are 0.4 mm in diameter with a shape factor of 0.85 and a specific gravity of 2.65 the depth of the bed is 0.75 meters and the porosity is 0.4 determine the head loss through the bed so we will say how to find out the bed loss head loss through a homogeneous filter media so what we have to do for the solution first we have to find out the Reynolds number because we have to find out whether it is in lamina flow regime or in turbulent flow regime or in transitional flow regime so first we have to find out the Reynolds number and already the specific gravity or rho is given as 998.2 kilograms per meter cube the density of water at 20 degree centigrade is given and mu is also given mu is 1.002 into 10 raise to minus 3 kilogram meter per meter second so Reynolds number we can find out using this formula phi into rho into vs d by mu so we this formula we have seen earlier so Reynolds number is nothing but and your phi value is 0.85 and density is 998.2 into and this is the diameter of the particle 4 into 10 raise to minus 4 meters and this is the velocity 1.11 into 10 raise to minus 3 divided by mu mu is 1.002 into 10 raise to minus 3 kilogram per meter second so by substituting this one we will be getting a Reynolds number as 0.375 and we know that okay if the Reynolds number is less than 1 the flow is in the laminar regime or it is a laminar flow so based upon this one we can find out the friction factor so the next step is calculation of f dash and f dash can be find out using this formula 150 into 1 minus e divided by re plus 1.75 and we have an re value of 0.375 and an e value of 0.4 so we will be getting the f dash value as 241.75 
So once this F dash value is available, you can calculate the head loss using this formula. H of is equal to F dash L into 1 minus E V S squared divided by E cube G into D P. So all the terms are known to us and F dash is 241.75 and length of the medium is 0.75 meter and 1 minus E term is 1 minus 0.4 into V S squared 1.11 into 10 raise to minus 3 whole squared divided by E cube into G into D P. So, we will be getting the head loss as 0.534 meters. So, now I will show you some pictures okay, which, which explains okay, how the filtration is taking place. Okay. So, we, we were discussing about the mechanism of filtration in the previous class. So, there are different mechanisms like mere straining, then mechanical, this is mechanical straining, then gravitational settling, inertial impaction, direct interception, Brownian motion, electrokinetic process, etc. So, this is an example of mechanical straining. So, we can see that here, this is a filter grain, this is another filter grain, the size, the pore size available in between these two are this much. And if your particle or the flock which is of higher size, then what will happen? that comes here and it is not able to pass through the filter grain. So, what happens? It is just stay there. It is nothing but a straining just like a surface filter. So, here also the same thing is happening. So, this is so this, uh, this is what, how, how the mechanical straining is place, taking place even in a gravity filter. So, this is the example of physical adsorption because sand grains are having some charge and this particles may have some charge or may not have some charge. So, when they come closer, okay, when the vicinity or the distance between them is such that the Van der Waals force is predominant compared to the repulsive force, then what will happen? It will be coming and getting attached to the filter media. So, this is an example of physical adsorption. So, here we can see in all the grains it is getting attached. This is the photograph of a mixed media filter, okay. whatever we were discussing earlier. If we use different material as filter media, we can use different grain sizes and we will be getting a pore distribution in such a way that that will be increasing the rate of filtration and efficiency of filtration by utilizing the pores properly. So, here we can see this is the anthracite coal and here the sand this is the gravel. So, the pore size distribution will be the larger one in the top and the smaller one in the bottom. So, this is a picture of a filter. So, this is the inlet water. So, this is the water level during backwash and we can see the anthracite called sand and gravel and this is the backwash outlet. And if you want to see the grains of anthracite, okay, we can see that it is those are not spherical grains and this is the picture of the sand particle and this is a picture of the wash water troughs whatever is placed in the top of the filter when backwash is taking place. So, this will be collecting all the dirty water and putting back to the treatment system. So, here we can see how the dirty water is getting collected in the trough and it is going for for the treatment. So, now we will conclude uh, whatever we have seen in filtration. Okay, filtration is a polishing treatment unit. Okay, it improves the aesthetic of the water and if turbidity is present in the water, okay, it will be affecting the bacteriological quality of the water also. The reason is disinfection may not be effective if turbid particles are present. So, that is why there is a that is why the Bureau of Indian Standard has put the standard or the limit of turbidity present in drinking water should be 1 NDU, okay. it should not exceed 1 NDU because more turbid particles are there then the bacteria or the microorganism will take shelter on this colloidal particles or the particulate matter whatever is present in the water. And we discuss what are the different types of filters and most commonly used filters are slow sand filters and rapid sand filter. Rapid slow sand filter, the mechanism of filter filtration is mechanical straining and there is a biological layer formation on the surface of the 
loss on filter. So, that will be removing all the dissolved organic matter from the water. So, the cleaning mechanism of or cleaning of sloss and filter is done by mechanical by scrapping the top layer because the filtration will be taking place only in the top layer. So, it will be getting dirty. So, if you remove that one, the remaining portion will be working as such. In rapid sand filter, which is most commonly used in water treatment plant because the rate of filtration is very high compared to slow sun filter, almost 40 to 50 times. So, here entire depth of the filter is being used for the cleaning purpose. So, if you want to clean the filter, once the head loss is reached the permissible limit, we have to clean the filter. It is done by backwashing and we can find out the head loss through the filter by using the flow through porous media or Carmen Cosney equation and we can even find out the backwash velocity. Okay. Backwashing is achieved by fluidizing the bed okay. and if we can provide enough backwash vel velocity, what will happen? The media will be getting fluidized around one, 150 to 170 percentage of the existing bed. So, what will happen? Because of that one, the particles will be shearing with each other and whatever is the dust particle or the dirty particles collected on the filter bed will be coming out. And we have seen that the how can we select the sand or how can we separate the sand required for a filter from the heap of sand. And we have also seen what are the dimensions of different units in a filter. And after filtration, the water will be very, very clean. The only treatment left over is disinfection that we will discuss in the next class.